So in the last couple of videos we opened this 27 inch iMac and upgraded it to the max DAC configuration that Apple doesn't even sell. But was the performance improvement worth the money and the risk? <laughs> So what's up guys, Fabria and welcome to Shades of Tech. This is episode number 5 and the finale of upgrading my iMac to the max style configuration series. I'll leave the link to all the other videos up here. In the last couple of episodes we took this iMac and upgraded to the max style configuration that Apple doesn't even sell. And as promised, we explained how an iMac can be a very good Mac to upgrade while we wait for a Mac Pro Mini. But before we dive in, I want to thank OWCMXSales.com for making this video possible and for sending the components that we needed for this upgrade. Be sure to check the links in the description. For reference, we used a late 2014-27 inch iMac based model, a Mac that only pay costs around $400 and with $800 of components, it became really a solid Mac for 4K video editing in 2020 and for the years to come, it's really something you should consider doing. So, of course, we opened it, we removed the screen, we completely amounted every component and maxed out CPU storage and RAM to the maximum capacity we could fit in for this model. In this video, we're going to recap the upgrades we made, we'll talk about performance improvements and we'll dive in the economics to see if this whole upgrade was worth it. So we passed from an Intel Quad Core i5 4670 3.4 to 3.5 GHz 4 thread to an Intel i7 4771 still Quad Core but 8 threads 3.5 up to 3.9 GHz. It might not seem such an improvement since the number of cores is the same, but we went from an i5 to an i7 and we doubled the number of threads, being able to take full advantage of multi-thread operation and the base speed of the new one is basically the turbo boost of the original one and I must say it's very fast. The synthetic benchmark Geekbench tests the new configuration scored 20% more in the single core and even 30% more in the multi-core score and in Cinebench R20 we got a very high score compared to the original configuration with even a 35% increase. This upgrade needed of course the complete removal of the motherboard and the heat sink needing of course removal and reapply of thermal paste so it was the most difficult one in theory even if I found myself comfortable doing that even if it was my first time opening a Mac or even a PC. Then we upgraded the storage, we removed the original mechanical hard drive 3.5 inch and we went for a full overkill 3TB super fast SSD configuration that is still even not available on the 2019 Apple lineup. For example, a 2TB SSD iMac cost around $700 and we made 3TB for less than half the price. Also, this upgrade gave impressive results. We got a 30% reduction in booting time and now it's super snappy as startup. And the Blackmagic test is really great. We got 18 times improvement in read and write speed. This iMac is now ready for up to 4K 60 at DNG Cinema Raw video. Very impressive. We have both the speed of an SSD and the large capacity, which is not that trivial nowadays. This upgrade was divided in two parts, swapping the mechanical 3.5 inch hard drive with a 2.5 inch 2 terabyte SSD Mercury Electra 6G with an adapter and the temperature sensor. And the second part is a blade SSD, the Aura Pro X2 1 terabyte that was put in the slot behind the motherboard. And we left the easiest upgrade as last the memory upgrade. We went from a base 8 gig to a maxed out 32 gig configuration of 1600 MHz DDR3 memory divided in 4 8 gig each DIMMs. This upgrade is really no brainer, there is a backdoor and it is intended by Apple to be available for users, so definitely do it because you can save a lot of money. For example, with OWC memory you can save up to $700 for the 64 configuration on the 2019 iMac. But 
How much did we spend in total? Well, considering that the base late 2013-27 inch iMac used on eBay costs around $400, we added another $800 worth of premium components. It is a little expensive, but for $1,200 you can find better Mac in 2020. And of course, to make this video, we wanted to go maxed out to fully achieve this iMac potential, but it doesn't mean that you need to upgrade everything. In my opinion, the best value could be to upgrade only the RAM to 24 gig and one terabyte SSD, adding $230 for a total of $632, and you really can find better iMac for 2020. So my final thoughts, was it worth it? Well, for me, totally, yes. I fully take advantage of the power I have right now. Uh, before I felt constrained, and now I feel free, and through it all, I think I could take advantage of a faster CPU, maybe an octa-core, and of course, 64 gig of RAM, but for this, I will need another Mac. And so we'll see maybe in another video. But let's break down the single upgrade to see which one is fit for you. CPU upgrade. If you have already an iMac with the base CPU, it could be okay, but you have to do your homework first. Otherwise, if you need to buy a used one, just go for an iMac with the maxed out CPU already. It will cost around $100 more, but the CPU upgrade will cost you more. And you will probably get even a better GPU. SSD upgrade. Upgrading the mechanical drive with an SSD is totally worth for you in my opinion. Just two steps, remove the glass and the screen and remove the left speaker assembly. 20 minutes, 2.5 inch hard drive are getting super cheap and it will change your iMac line night and day. But the Blade SSD is more complex. It needs more time and you have to remove everything. If you are happy with one or two terabyte configuration, you can just use the 2.5 inch SSD, even if it's not as fast as the Blade. But if you are looking for fast boot times and regular workflow, I think it's the sweet spot. RAM upgrade. This one is the upgrade you must do. Just don't be overkill. Take the RAM you need. 16 gig is enough for regular tasks web browsing, social networking, and so on. 24 for full HD video editing and 32 for 4K video editing. Keep in mind that you can still start with 16 gig and then add another blade in the future to get 24 if it's not enough. So in conclusion, if you have a 2017 or older iMac, definitely upgrade the RAM and the 2.5 inch SSD. If you need crazy fast storage, go for the blade SSD. I'm really loving it but 90% of you won't need to upgrade the CPU. Just get the used one with the CPU you need. Unless the 2017 model, which is still expensive even if used, and you will save a lot of money by upgrading the CPU yourself. But more importantly, don't remove your warranty. If you got a 2019 model, just upgrade the RAM. You can always upgrade the rest after warranty is over and of course down the line when the components will get cheaper. I would love to do that with the i9 octa-core. So this was it, I hope you liked this series. If you did leave a comment or a like or a dislike and let me know which Mac we should upgrade next. And as always, stay tuned on Shades of Tech. Ciao!